I have just launched a mastermind called The Circle of Influence, where I'll be taking you under my wing to show you how to build a platform online that generates an income for you so that you can have more freedom in your life. I'm also gonna show you how to become a powerful influencer online so that you can score interviews and so you can get exposure on major publications and platforms. And I'm gonna even show you how to build these platforms yourself, such as a website, a podcast, a YouTube channel, and a social media following so that you can get your message out there to millions. I'm also gonna show you how to network with other incredible leaders online so that you can interview them and so that you can collaborate with them and really show you how to refine your story so you can share it in an unforgettable way to score more interviews, to score book deals, and to gain more speaking opportunities so that you can become a powerhouse leader. Now, if this speaks to you, make sure you head over to I am Joel Brown dot com slash apply and get in before I close my doors on this live interactive exclusive opportunity where I'm going to go deep with you and with the community of circle of influence game changers don't miss this now let's get into this interview ladies and gentlemen welcome to the addicted to success podcast i'm your host joel brown and i'm here today with a fellow aussie an incredible entrepreneur a guy that i have massive respect for his name is peter j bone he created a brand called achieve the impossible and peter and i have been connected for well at least five to six years And I've just seen him grow massively over the years. And he's such a humble and serving guy. I just love the way that he shows up for his community, for his followers of millions. And uh, his book just came out. So I'm so excited to dive into that and to uh, have Peter share his wisdom with you today. So Peter, thank you so much for joining us on the Addicted to Success podcast. First of all, it is my absolute pleasure. It is nice talking to a fellow Aussie on a podcast um, <laughs> and you're way too kind. I try and be humble. <laughs> Sometimes the numbers get to my head, but then, you know, <laughs> pretty quick to uh, <laughs> make me uh, pull my head in. So, no, nah, it's, it's been a, yeah, like the journey we've spent, you know, five, six years together and it's, um, it's been amazing seeing your growth and success as well. And it's amazing just a couple of guys from Aussie passionate about what they're doing, building a community, inspiring people, you know, and most of them, to be honest, we're never going to get the, the honor or the privilege to meet in real life. So it's incredible what we can do online. And I think that's, um, it's a huge passion of mine. And now it's, you know, I'm able to live that out in a day to day life. So very grateful, very honored and very humble. You see. Amen, brother. Amen. Love it. So your brand is called achieve the impossible. Could you mm-hmm. share with us, to create a little bit of context, could you share with us when was a time where you faced the odds, broke through your struggle, turned your pain into power, your mess into a message, your test into a testimony? When did you achieve the impossible? Well, there, there are a couple times on my journey. The first one actually birthed the whole journey of Achieve the Impossible. In 2013, late 2013, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and he was given just four months to live. After a a routine test at the hospital, uh, the doctor said, this is not looking good at all. Um, And after further tests, they said the day after, literally you have four months left to live. Don't work another day in your life. Go spend time with friends and family. Unfortunately, this is terminal. There is nothing we can do. Um, And so I came home after work as a teacher that evening um, and mum and dad sat me down to that news and I always had a dream to set mum and dad up on a farm or or a block of land somewhere that they could retire because they provided myself and my two older brothers the most incredible life. They're amazing parents, the best you could ask for. And so I really, really wanted to give back and that was always my dream. The thing is that dream seemed so unattainable, but at the same time, I assumed it would come true. I thought, yeah, I believe in this so strongly and I don't know how to do it, but I assumed one day it would come true. As soon as I heard that four months that dad had left to live, it just popped my dream like a balloon. And I thought, what on earth? I can't do this in four months. Now what am I going to do? I've let myself down because I wasn't true and obedient to my dream. I'd thought about it. I dreamt about it a lot, but I hadn't actually put anything into action. I hadn't set a plan. I hadn't created a schedule, routine, habits, none of that stuff to actually bring my dream into reality. I was kind of just waiting for it to happen. And so that really shook me to my core. And the way that birthed achieved the impossible is that at night, 
I would, I'd be so brave during the day in front of friends, family, mum, dad, the people I worked with, once they all started to hear this, this awful news at night in my bed alone, I just think, oh my gosh, like what's happening? What am I doing with my life? But also what do I do with my family? What, how do I make this the last, you know, four months with dad count? And I found myself writing down quotes that I'd read. I'd writing down little things of sermons, of messages, podcasts, whatever thing could inspire me. I was writing down little bits and pieces and they were really helping me align to who I really was. Not specifically a dream, not specifically a road to go down, but more of my identity. And I think that is such an important facet that a lot of people today really find useful. It is that identity first shapes your dream second. A lot of people go out looking for a dream and think, right, if I make a million bucks this year, I'm going to go and be the person I want to be. If I have the new car, if I have this, if I have this, if I can have this influence, if I can find the right one, then I'll be complete. I found taking a step back and going, right, I'm not going to pursue a dream. I'm going to pursue wholeness in myself and become so self aware with my identity and what I believe um, my God-given gifts and abilities and talents and the dreams that he's put on my heart are to do. And so as I was writing down these quotes, they were inspiring me so much. And I thought, is there any way that I could share this message with other people in just little quote forms? I didn't want to go make massive big blog posts, which is what everyone was doing in 2013. I wanted it to be short and sharp, just a little 10 second piece of uh, inspiration to, to kickstart the day, sow those, sow those seeds for the day. And Instagram was relatively fresh at that stage. And so, um, yeah, started jumping on Instagram and just sharing a few thoughts with no intention whatsoever about the number, no intention about influence. I just wanted to inspire one person at a time. And now I'm fortunate that that one person has turned over into over a million of those one people. And so for me, it's not a, it's not a cumulative, cumulative sum number of 1.1 million followers. It's just these, these are lives. These are one, it's one life at a time. And I couldn't yeah. care less if that, that number dropped through an algorithm or that number changed somehow. For me, it is just that one person at a time that I'm inspiring. And if I can help someone during facing what they face on a day-to-day uh, situation or circumstance with a little bit of hope and reignite an impossible dream in their life. That's absolutely perfect. And so that, that started that impossible. So achieving my impossible was literally starting achieve the impossible because that dream seemed impossible. I wanted to set something up and I had no idea. And now I've got a business that I've done full time for the last four years based on Achieve the Impossible and based on the amazing community that have come together to call Achieve the Impossible their own, I guess. Um, And then another big one for me, a couple of years ago, um, I'd always struggled with my weight. Um, I was very unhealthy, very unfit, and it just become a a progression of just bad habits and an unhealthy lifestyle. And and for me, being a normal size, um, fitting into clothes I saw everyone else wear that did not come in my size was a massive thing for me. Again, the exact same principle. I had my dream that seemed impossible, but in, and I'd pursued that achieving that dream so many times. I'd try fad diets. I'd try this. I'd try just go crazy and psycho on exercise. After three days, I'd, my body would be completely dead. I didn't see the results after those three days and just gave up. It's the same thing with dieting. And then a couple of years ago, I didn't lose weight on the outside until I lost that baggage on the inside and lost that need Ooh. and that acceptance Deep. and that feeling of I'm not good enough until I lose weight. You flip that and you go, I am good enough. And because of that, I will lose weight as a result of me being true to who I am and, and living up to my own potential, my own capacity, that which I know I'm capable of living to and holding yourself to that higher standard. Then you see those results. And things just started tripling on from there. And it's, um, yeah, so that's just a couple of things that I've achieved that seem impossible. But I hear so many things from my community about dreams that, that I would never dream of in a million years, like recording an album, like starting up, um, you know, different things in different industries that I can inspire because of those principles and strategies and techniques and the mindset and the heart behind achieving anything that seems impossible. Wow, brother. Thank you for sharing that. That is really powerful. Both of those examples, I'm sure so many people 
can relate to. I'm sure it resonates so deep. And, uh, you know, sometimes these things are out of our control and you've got to put it in God's hands. I know that you put up a post recently. You said sometimes God closes doors because it's time to move forward. Yep. He knows you won't move unless your circumstances force you. Trust the transition. God's got you. Got you. And, and I yep. love that. It's like it resonates so deep because there are things that we try and control so much so mm. on the outside rather than going, wait a minute, let's find peace on the inside. Let's find acceptance. And then what, who do I have to be now in order for me to be able to move into this next chapter? Totally. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of your followers are probably reaching out to you going like hearing your story and going that resonates. And here's mine. You must hear a lot of stories of people having these like breakdowns and breakthroughs in their life. And this mm. is, this is what it means to be a human. Man. Yeah. Life isn't like a flat line like this. That's boring. It's, yeah. it's up and down, bro. It moves and people go through things and they, they grow and either, either they learn or they, you know, they, they uh, sit in it and, and just say like, why me? Why me? And blame the world. But I love the fact that you got up and you're like, I need to do something different now because I keep getting the same result. And, and ultimately, that's what it is, right? It's like, how do we do something different and get a new result? Now, I know that you speak at events and I know you've got your book out. This came out very recently, Achieve the Impossible. Yeah, okay. If you're listening right now, make sure you go and grab it. Follow <laughs> Peter on Instagram, Achieve the Impossible, and you'll see it there. It's amazing. I love the way that he uh, elegantly shares it and is just so behind it and certain about his his content. It's just amazing stuff. Um, now, in the book, do you have any exercises or maybe some questions that challenge or shift perspective so that the listeners here today can bring this on board and, and make it an actionable uh, you know, morning or evening for them right now? Yeah. Well, the book, I just happened to have one right in front of me, right there. There it is. <laughs> Achieve the Impossible. There's a hey, couple yeah. of titles called Achieve the Impossible because that is a beautiful term um, and my favorite term. Um, but look for the black book. It is available on achievetheimpossible.com for this limited edition. I will sign every copy uh, that comes. Yo, it to looks website. sleek too, man. I, I right, want that on my coffee table. On the, um, it's all embossed and pretty and gorgeous. Um, yeah. You'll get a surprise when you feel the cover because it's not your typical book cover. Um, the way I've wrote the book is in many chapters. So it's a series of many chapters. You can either sit through and read it in three or four hours. It's not too intense. It's not too heavy. But the idea of it is to plant seeds in your life that can really grow through your day to day. And so, so the byline is be inspired, challenged and equipped to achieve your impossible dream. And I, I think it is that, that planting seeds. We have so much information and content out there, especially in the online space, let alone with the people in our lives around us who are on that journey with us. And I think so many people see a massive warehouse of content and they are seeds everywhere. And we've only got a field called our life a certain size. And I think what a lot of people try and do is just run into the barn, into the internet, wherever, wherever that inspires and motivates them, get the wheelbarrow, scoop up as much seeds as they can and just pile them into the field and go, right, boom, inspire me, change my life. I want results. I want things. This, this, this. And it's like, no, that's not how something strong grows. Go into the barn, find the seeds that you align with in your own life, in your own mindset, your dreams, desires, goals, ambitions. Find someone who's creating those seeds or someone that will help produce those seeds. Select those and be so, so careful about what you plant in your life, what you plant in your field. I'm so intentional about who I follow on social media as an example because I know that something that they say could plant that seed in my field that I water and I give the environment to grow. And so when you do read a book like this, it really is just select seeds that you can plant in your field and go, right, I'm going to focus on this. And any single one of these chapters on the inside, you can, so I've started with a quote on every chapter, a really, really small quote. And then that leads into the, um, the chapter itself. And those quotes, even just flicking through, whether you're at a doctor's room, I've got friends who are putting it up in their beauty therapist room. I've got friends who are putting it up anywhere they are. And the whole idea of it is you can read that quote and get inspired just by the quote. Or if you have a couple of more minutes, you could get inspired by the chapter after it. If you've got even more time, you can go a few chapters and plant multiple seeds. But the thing is, 
you just plant those seeds, you give it time. It is designed to be reread and reread and reread over and over again. Because Joel, even the quotes that I wrote years ago, I find myself reading again and go, yeah, that actually applied back then because I wrote it back then. But now that caption means so much more to me. And I wrote something from a, from a certain frame of mind. And like you said, life goes in up and downs. And we have an up, we have a down. But the thing is with life, as long as we can be trending up, the ups and the downs don't really matter because that forms our character, that forms um, our strength within us. And so in those up times on this season here, it might be a down time once you're up here and then it comes down to here. So the same level you're on could be those secrets and those things that really do um, pierce through your day-to-day -day struggles, your day-to-day -day circumstances, challenges, and really just go, right, I'm going to have the seed. I'm going to plant it within and allow that to grow and flourish in a thing called life. Dude, this is so deep. And I'm so <laughs> We've got deep real quick. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so happy that you went there because I, I feel like so many people don't audit the content they're reading. They're just following anyone and everything. They don't know whose game they're playing. They're getting so involved yeah. in the game of what society has created and they're just like really not placing bets on who they really are and what they're really capable of. Instead, they're just sitting in comparison. They're sitting in, uh, you know, why me? And they're sitting in, well, if someone else is able to do it at this level, that must mean yeah. that they have some greatness that I can't tap into. And it's just so not true. Yeah. And I think each and every single one of us, regardless of a number of followers on Instagram or anything, I've often said, you know, all throughout the journey, over the last six years that Achieve the Impossible has been alive, I've said time and time again, and I stand stronger to it now than I ever have, if I am any different without those followers, I'm not doing my job. And I'm not being integral Ooh. to who I am and yeah. what I represent. Like, legit, Joel, don't do it. But if you did, you could strip me of my one whatever community, one million community, through my personal Peter J. Bone account, through the Achieve the Impossible account, if I changed who I was at all, I'd be shocked. I'd be a little bit annoyed <laughs> that, that <laughs> you my, would, of course. my community is gone. Yeah. But, and that's not an invite to any hackers out there to steal my account, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to be myself and I want to speak out of a place of my identity. And I've gone through those ups and downs in the last six years, like you have, like every other human in the planet has. And I want to journey with people through those. My posts have become raw, uh, vulnerable. They've become raw. They really just show a part of who I am. I'm saying I, I'm not perfect by any means. And people these days can, it, it is easier to put someone on a pedestal if you're reading their content or you see how many people follow their content or how many people in the community they've created. But really, each and every single one of us, just like you said, has that greatness within that greatness does not go to certain people and not others. And no matter what your circumstance, what your challenges are right now that you're facing in your day-to-day -day life, greatness does not determine, is not determined by those challenges. Your greatness is determined with the fact that you have breath going in and out of your lungs right now. And I believe, I'm a, I'm a man of faith. I, you know, I love God with all my heart. I love Jesus, all this stuff. And I feel that you wouldn't be on earth if you didn't have a reason for being here. And yeah. with every single human God created, he has planted those seeds of greatness. Yes, they're not going to just flourish automatically all the time. You're going to have to give them water. You're going to have to give them light. You're going to have to give them inspiration and that self-belief and that mindset that's thinking, right, this seed, I'm going to be intentional about making it grow. I'm not just going to plant it and leave it and come back in 10 years and go, oh, God, you didn't make me great. What's up with this? God doesn't just purely make you great out of a lucky dip and go, right, this person, this person, this person, right, you're going to be rich, you're going to be millionaires, you'll be a billionaire, you can have this, you can have this. No, God gives us the seeds and says, right, now you go use the gifts, talents, and abilities that I've given you to make that seed become all it can be out of the potential that I've planted within it. Powerful stuff, brother. Yeah, I'm a believer too. And, you know, I, I look at it like I don't believe that we are just dancing with our DNA. That, that is all that we're here to do. That's a really cool way to put it. Like, honestly, just think about it. It's like we have such an incredible mind 
our bodies are so capable of, of healing in ways you've never, like I, I uh, was riding on a bike and I scraped my arm across a, a rock and it, like cut it right open. And it's only been like a week and a half. And I look and it's wow. like nearly fully healed. And I look at that like, wow, my body decided to get together and go, hey, we need to go and fix this. Yeah. And that's, you know, without me going, telling it consciously that it needs to do that, it just makes like that little incident was happened for me to look at it and sit in it and go, wow, if this is unconsciously happening where it's healing and fixing itself, like what else can I tap into within myself that God has given me in order for me to be able to heal other parts of my life? And not only that, be able to be the example and the inspiration and create the ripple effect to heal others through, you know, my gifts and that you get to do it in your way too. And mm. I love how brave you are, man. I love how courageous you are in the way that you share your content originally. I think there are a lot of, uh, you know, Instagram account holders, content creators online that are just like copying each other's stuff. They're like going, oh, well, this is popular. So I'm going to play it safe and share something that's popular because I know it's going to get likes. I, I find it hard to respect that on a high level. I know why people do it because they're trying to keep the quantity up. But I look at it like, man, you have the, the perfect opportunity now to self-express, to be able yeah. to share what God has given to you for the world to continue to innovate and, and enhance our experience as human beings. And so if you're listening right now, like go and look at, uh, I love the work that you do, Peter, go and look at Peter's work. Look at my work. Like we push ourselves to create originally and to share unique content. And the more that can be encouraged, I really believe the more you see, you know, people's gifts expressed in this world. And, and that's what it means to create. We've been given a gift to create, man. Like to yeah. me, success is being able to freely create at a high level. What's your yeah. definition of success, bro? Break it down so we can get familiar with you. I think success is, yeah, living out on a day-to-day -day your capacity and your potential based on what God's put on your heart. Genuinely, I don't think success is about results. I don't think success is about the destination. That merely is a result or an outworking of your day-to-day -day life. I think success is more about the journey than it is about the destination. Um, right. And, and yeah, that, that is countercultural a lot of the time. A lot of people put the emphasis on, right, we're going to work, 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 work. My New Zealand All Blacks rugby team this week, unfortunately, have just lost a semi final to England, which we're not going to talk about because you're a uh -oh. Wallaby supporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and there's so much disappointment for not achieving that goal of winning the World Cup. The fact that they didn't or they aren't in the final and they didn't win the World Cup does not mean their whole month's years of preparation has gone to waste. The fact that you didn't make a million dollars in your first year of business doesn't mean the entire journey is now wasted. The fact that you didn't lose that 40 pounds, you only lost 32 pounds, doesn't mean the entire journey is wasted. Success is all about that journey. And please do not ever give up on that journey. And the cool thing is that journey, it starts fresh every single day and you build upon what is already done. When you focus on the destination, you fall in love with the trophy more than the game. When you fall in love with the trophy, success may come your way, but it's very short lived and it's not um, substantially recurring and it's not sustainable. The moment you transfer that love and that view of success from a, a destination to the actual journey, from the trophy to the actual, to the actual game is when it's sustainable. It's long-term because you and I both know, Joel, like Instagram success or followers or community, it doesn't happen overnight. If we headed out there and started our Instagram accounts going, right, let's get a million followers in the first month. Let's get this. Let's get this. Let's get this. We wouldn't be here. Like that wouldn't have happened. And I know for myself, if you'd told me when I first started my Instagram account, I was in a cafe at lunchtime on my, on my lunch break as a teacher and I was on my phone and I thought, right, what's the name of this little Instagram account that I'm going to start? And I thought of all, all the common names and then I came across and I thought, right, no, I don't want what, and it's not the end result. It's not what I'm posting. It's why am I doing this? What do I want to inspire people to do? And then I came up with that term, achieve the impossible. And I thought, this is not an Instagram account based on what I post. This is an Instagram account who are gathering together people who believe what, what we believe. And that is that we can achieve the impossible. And it's the why behind the results.
It's the why behind our goals, why behind our entire life. And we go, right, we believe that we are capable. We believe that we have unlimited potential. We believe that God's given us things in our life that aren't just for us to live a comfortable life, that aren't even just for us to absolutely crush it and have that success or what we call success in our life. The purpose I believe in our life is to live in that success, but it's not for us. I think it's more about other people than it is us. So with my um, following on Achieve the Impossible, it, everything I do is for them. It's not for me going, um, you know, do I get financial gain from this? Do I get influential? Do I get fame from this? No, at the, at the end of every day, I think, right, have I inspired someone? And, and you can see that through the messages that I receive. You can see that through comments. You can see that through other things. And I think if we were focused on the destination and being successful in terms of fame or money, I could look at my bank account and that could decide if I'm successful or not. I don't want to do that. I could look at my follower number and think, oh my gosh, I lost 100 followers today, but I don't. And that's why I do that because success is not about the results that happen. It's about the day in, day in, living according to what God's put on my heart to fulfill my dreams, desires, and ambitions. Yeah, we're going to stop measuring the wrong things. Yeah, totally. Stop measuring from the inside, not the outside. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've got to let, we've got to be very careful what defines our success as well. Because we can have that, but we think, right, is it in a number? Because numbers will never, ever satisfy you. I can promise you right now. And ask any person with a big following or a big bank account or a big amount of cars or a massive house, and you ask them if once they got there that they felt so fulfilled and at peace and they felt like they'd lived up to their calling. Every single person, once they get to there, you go, oh, what's the next step? As soon as someone has that, they're not going to go, oh, well, I've achieved everything. I'm just going to chill out and relax the rest <laughs> yeah. of the time. Once you hit that million followers, you go, right, I want 2 million. Once you hit that first million in the bank account, you think, right, how do I get 10? How do I get 100 million? Everything is about doing that. And that's fine. And that's, that's setting some high ambition and some faith-filled goals. But the result itself isn't going to sustain you and isn't going to give you that peace and that, that happiness and the gratitude in life. It is yeah. about falling in love with the journey. So instead of falling in love with that $10 million um, yearly sales, fall in love with the business and think, why am I doing this business? What can I do for my family? How can I set up my friends around me who have journeyed with me? How can I change the lives of those I'm never, ever going to get to meet? How can I change the lives of those on the other side of the world? What charities can I start? Let's start giving back. And I promise you, that is going to keep you so much more accountable than the new Lamborghini in your garage, than the new boat just sitting out on the harbor. It is when we, did, we dedicate our lives to the fulfillment of other people's dreams is when our dreams become fulfilled. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the thing is, because it's a reflection of the value we're giving the world. Like if mm-hmm. you say, okay, someone's enjoying it, someone's, you know, taking it in, it's shifting their perspective, you know you're having that inspirational positive effect and that's what gives you meaning. Uh, that, it's really interesting because I had a, this conversation with my friend uh, Ben not long ago. We talked about like you can't not be selfish. And, and you know, we, there's like negative connotations around the word selfish. But he broke it down in a way where he said like when you give, you're still doing something in a way to get something for yourself. And it's true. It's just like not something external that's measured, but it's something inside where you're like if I give this, even if you're saying removing expectations, you're still sharing a value and feeling this like fulfillment because you've, your value has been received and appreciated. And when it's not, even if we like to think we're so like high and almighty and perfect, we still feel yeah. a little bit like, damn, I wish I got a bit appreciated. Yeah. So I think, you know, the space that we're in, it's like, well, what's the game then? The game is, yes, we love to give. Yes, we love to serve. But it's, it's us also perfecting more of our craft and like really working on our craft to the point where we can more consistently give something that is of higher value that has an impact so that we know we can continue to get that, that kind of like reciprocal thing going on where they're getting value, Absolutely. feeling impact and results. Yeah. And we're at the same time feeling fulfilled because we're delivering that. And, and it's once you like understand that game and you're in that and it's, and it's working well for you, it is really hard to go back to looking at the money. It is really hard to go back looking at the houses and everything else. And, I know like even for me personally, bro, 
I kept saying it like it's about giving and contribution and da, 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 And I thought that I got it. And maybe in 10 years time, I look back at me now and be like, what the hell? This guy is still didn't get yeah. it. But I know that it's been this journey. And I, I want everyone that's listening right now to know that like striving for that is going to be the most fulfilling thing in your life of how to bring more value because ultimately you're going to learn more and more about contribution. The more you do it, it's a never ending game that, and that's exciting news because it means that like there's so much more to step into and feel fulfilled for, and there's more to give. Yeah. And and I love that point because I think it is misconceived by society when you're talking about being selfish and there is a sense that goes right for me to give 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 it is not nothing about me and it's all for other people but then you think for me to give i need to be getting and it's not getting out of the money it's not getting out of financial things it's more just getting right am i self-aware am i giving myself the chance to be true to myself? Am I looking after myself? Not just physically or mindset and things like that. It is, am I taking care of who I am? Am I taking care of the dreams that have been put in me? And until we take care of ourselves in that regard and be a little bit selfish, I don't think we can give as much as we're truly capable of giving. And I think that's the cool thing about communities and about people having their own dreams and desires and ambitions once we start getting so close to those and living up to the standard that they demand, we naturally start giving out to other people because we cannot achieve a dream by ourselves. Our dream will always be based around community. True and stuff. if we do do that dream by ourselves, it's a very, very, very lonely road. And by the time we get to the top, we realize, oh, this wasn't a dream at all. This was merely just a, an outworking of things that I thought I needed to heal my identity. I think we're designed, obviously, to be in community with people. That's why we're here. And I do not want to get to the end of my life with anything left in the tank. I don't want to get to my deathbed and think, oh, and for God to, to say to me, or I get to heaven and, and God to say to me, Pete, I gave you so much. What did you do with it? You, there could have been so much more you could have done. I don't ever want to hear that thought. And I know God wouldn't say that, but for me now living on earth, that is the way to keep me accountable to make sure I'm living up to a standard that does demand it. You and I have both been given an amazing honor and responsibility to, to talk, to minister into people's lives, no matter what religion, no matter what race, what sex, what, whatever they are, we have been given an opportunity to speak into other people's lives. And I don't care if you've got a million followers on your Instagram account or you've got two friends down the road you catch up for coffee with every week, that responsibility is the same. And like you said before, once we perfect our craft, if it is just having a one-on-one -on -one coffee chat, that's how I, that's the very, very early stages of Achieve the Impossible. I would catch up with a friend every single week for coffee and I'd say, right, what are your goals for this month? How can I help? What can I do to inspire you or challenge you in this or, or help with your mindset? And that there, because I've perfected my craft, has become something that looks like a dream, that looks like an outworking. Because I, was, um, because I was grateful and because I worked hard and faithful with the small things, I believe that God's given me more. Because I was faithful with those one-on-one -on -one coffee catch-ups and just helping one person's day, I believe that God's given me a bigger platform, bigger opportunity to reach more people. But then once you do your craft and you think, yeah, it's all good to just start give, 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 what about the business side? What about your money? And, and you know, how can you do that? Because you've got to pay the bills. You know, motivational quotes aren't going to pay the bills. <laughs> Once you develop your craft and you become authentic and true and you build a community, then you think, oh, it's the same with the book. It's a, it actually says book on my 2019 uh, plan and goals for this year, which is amazing. They have ticked all five off. I'm stoked. That was the last thing on the list. Good. But the book was more, it wasn't just a right, I'm going to write a book, let's go, let's go, let's go, figure out how to do this. It was a day in, day out, I'm writing the content that means the most to me. I spent time thinking, right, I want to cr uh, create the best captions, the best app messages. I've got an app called Achieve the Impossible as well, which I write a little bit more long form daily messages for. And those there have planted the seeds for the book. And by working on that craft, I then look back and go, oh, 
hold on, that's actually created a book, which is an avenue to, to monetize some things. And with that money, I can share the word more about Achieve the Impossible. I can reach more people with it. I can um, use it to, to, you know, for other people to have a conversation about, about their friends and their family. And I know so many people have bought multiple copies of this book saying, oh, I'm going to give this to friends. I've got someone here who really would love this book. I'm going to give. And that to me means the world. Even when people don't know me directly, the messages, the, the support, the inspiration goes beyond me. And that's where that legacy comes through. I absolutely love the thought of legacy when I think of Achieve the Impossible because with, with my dad's journey, you know, birthing that seed to create Achieve the Impossible, when dad passed away, eventually, it was literally four months to the day of his diagnosis. When he did pass, I had just over 3,000 followers on Achieve the Impossible. And every single morning, that's the question he'd ask you. Oh, my gosh, did you get any new followers? Because he, he had no concept of Instagram or social media <laughs> at all for a fact. Couldn't even work his iPad. But he knew that there was something in this that I, this was something I was so passionate about. He saw me put hours and hours every single day when I came home from work. He saw me putting in six to eight hours every day on the weekends into something I was so passionate about. And he could see that fire in my eye for reaching people. And every morning he'd say, how, you know, how many new followers did you get? What, what messages have you had? What, you know, reposts, all these things that meant wow. so, so much back then because it was such a small number. And he passed away when it was just over 3,000 followers. He thought that was the world. He was blown away by that. And he's like, I am so proud of you for doing this. And now my thing is that anytime I'm having a low day, anytime I'm struggling, whether the algorithm changes and I start losing followers or whatever it is, no matter what small little insignificant circumstance comes my way, I think Achieve the Impossible lives on as my dad's legacy. I wasn't able to give him his dream while he is here on earth. But while he's up in heaven, if I can live out my dream, he gets the, he gets the honor. He gets um, not glory for it, but he gets that fulfillment to see me achieve something that I was. And he planted those seeds through a life well lived. So I think, yeah, for, for me, legacy is everything. And what we do goes yeah. way beyond, like you're saying, the butterfly effect. Sorry, I don't shut up on these podcasts. Um, no, what you're saying about the butterfly effect, it does trickle. It does continue to go on. So don't think that one-on-one -on -one coffee catch-up with a friend where you inspire them stays there because their dream is going to rely people in their circle. All of a sudden, you start influencing that, and it only takes a few of these people to start reaching hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of people. And I want this world to be a better place when I leave it. When I go up to heaven, I want to look back and go, I have played my part in making this world a better place and bringing people closer, A, to God, through their dreams, through their own God-given ability and talents. And because I believe that God's given me this dream, the closer I get to my dream, I'm going to rely on God because it's not my dream. My dream I can achieve by myself and I don't need God. God does not give us dreams that we can achieve by ourselves. God gives us a God-sized dream that we need to partner with him to achieve. And because of that, I know it's going to be out of my depth. I know it's going to be uncomfortable. I know that I'm going to have no idea about the journey ahead. I always used to set five, 10, 20 year, even 30 year goals. Now I'm like, let's just focus on the short term, what I can see, because I know God's got that all sorted ahead. If I'm obedient with the day to day, that will lead me to the, um, to those long-term goals. So yeah, I feel yeah. it. I feel it on so many levels, man. You're in flow right now. I love that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I believe that God works wonders with courage and connection, right? I know the times where I stepped in and it felt scary. And I'm sure if you're listening right now, you've had times where you, you ask yourself, can I, can I make this happen? And this is the whole achieve the impossible. I love how we, we can circle back around to that. It's like when you have the courage and you step in, you're showing the world you're showing yourself that I'm willing to place bets on me and my yes. potential. And like, I fear my potential, bro. Like the potential that God's instilled within me, there's so much there. And it's like, wow, like, like how do we really do this? How can we do this? Like step in. And okay. it takes sometimes people to believe in you in certain areas. And then it takes sometimes some people to encourage you and say, Hey, 
you know what? You are the man for the job. You are the woman for the job. Like that connection as well. I know that I haven't been able to do what I've, what I've done by myself. There's just been so yeah. many people that have been a part of it. My community has stood strong. Your community stands hella strong. I see it, you know, and, and, and uh, that's really where it's at. You know, I have 2.7 million social media followers. It doesn't mean jack squat if they're not coming to, you know, our event in October in Australia. Or they're not buying, you know, our books and going deeper. I want to see people face to face. I want to hear mm. their stories. I know my story. I don't have to keep saying it. I want to know their stories because yeah. some of the most, the biggest turning points in my life was when I was courageous and when I also connected with people that I wouldn't usually connect with and it just shifted the trajectory of my life. And I think that this is what it's about is God wants us to be courageous enough to step into spaces that we never knew existed or never would usually step into in order for us to be able to have a different experience because it has to catch us by surprise. Otherwise, we're not going to pay attention to it. Yeah. And if we knew the entire path ahead and we knew the ins and outs of how to make our dream a reality then we're yeah. relying on our own strength and our own knowledge the entire time. And well, that's why I don't go anything, to psychics, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to know all that. I want to just exactly. create. <laughs> if I've learned anything over these six years, the six-year journey of achieving the impossible, it's still a baby. It's still a little seedling. It's popped up out of the ground. I know what it may look like, but if there's anything that I could learn, it's my knowledge, my wisdom, my experience is nowhere near as good as tapping into God's wisdom. And I, I, when, the times when I get stressed and, and focused on the tiny little minute details and forget the big picture, I'm like, right, stop, take a pause. How's God seen this? What's it like from God's eye view? Look at your entire life as a bird's eye view. And no matter what challenges, what circumstances you're facing, and those circumstances and challenges can last for months, years, but it's not your entire life. And you wouldn't be having them you wouldn't be facing them if they weren't equipping you for what's next. The challenges you're facing today are preparing you for the blessings you're getting tomorrow. And I think it's an, an amazing thing. And that comes back down, again, journey over destination. We're not thinking, oh, I'm a success because I haven't had any uh, challenges or obstacles or anything like that. It's like, no, the obstacles are the way. That shows that we're on the right path. If we're getting some kind of resistance and that we have that and it's conflicting with that real, real heart, uh, dream and passion and desire we've got. It's like, boom, this gives us the strength to step over, to step through and break through to a whole nother level. So I totally agree that it's, um, yeah, it's not about just tapping into our own strength and, and knowing the exact path ahead. It's just being obedient one step at a time. And that's the best thing about the future. It only happens one day at a time. So no matter if you're in moments of absolute bliss and life's just going absolutely wonderfully, or if you're in despair and circumstances that you never imagined that you'd be in or you'd be having to face, the future just happens one day at a time. And time isn't going to speed up, go crazy. It's not going to slow down. You determine how you view the time you've got. And each and every single day, you can make a choice. No matter what is happening around me, I can determine what's happening within me. And then even when you're talking about falling off your, was it a bike um, and grazing your arm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was two bike. words that you said that just struck a, a huge chord with me and you said it was happening for you. There, there's a little thing I write in the book yeah. about things not happening to you, they're actually happening for you. And the moment we change our perception to go, oh my gosh, I just got this letter, I just got this lawyer thing, I just got whatever this bill, no matter what it is, having an issue with a family member or a close friend, this isn't happening to you. It's not an attack to you. As much as what, as what it seems on the surface, this is happening for you. And it's an opportunity to build. It's an opportunity to strengthen your character, to get closer to God. It's an opportunity to experience something that you'll need for later on in life. And I think so often we can just focus on, oh, it is what it is for today. No, there is so much learning that you're going to need for your future. Because the future, if you've got breath in your lungs right now, you've got a future. And that future is written by God, but he only reveals it one step at a time. Sometimes he gives us a glimpse because he knows that's what we need in the season. If you don't have a glimpse, you don't need it just yet. There's an old game that I used to play when I was a kid. Well, I used to watch my older brothers play it, actually. It's called World of Warcraft or something like that. Oh, yeah. Some people know it. And I loved in the maps, 
where, and because I was thinking about this exact thought process and I thought, how do I say this for my audience? How do I bring that across in a way that makes sense? Because I could see it clearly. But then when you're chartering an uncharted map area or an uncharted territory and your little man's walking and you can see just a small radius around him is illuminated, but everything else is dark. God shows you what you need to see when you need to see it. If you can't see the future yet, if you don't know where you're going, don't freak out. It's not going to illuminate by freaking out. All you need to do is go, right, I see what I can see now. During my teaching career, I, there was moments where I did freak out and go, oh my gosh, like, I, I enjoy this. I've got great connections with community, et cetera, et cetera. It's comfortable. I've got a regular paycheck. But I knew deep down it wouldn't be the last job I ever do. And even though I loved it, I knew there was something else that, that I was meant to step into. And there were times where I thought, oh, what is this? And I'll get so frustrated because I thought, well, what's my next step? What's my next project? I don't know what I'm doing. But it was just in those in-between times where God brought my dad's journey with cancer. And, and as serious and as, as awful as it was, the journey... I can look back now and with all respect and honor to dad and, and anyone who's experienced any journey with cancer, whether it's been terminal, whether it's been um, just illness through life, whatever it is, with all due respect and honor to that, I can look at dad's cancer journey as a gift from God looking back now because it wasn't happening to me. I didn't lose my dad, my, my dad on earth. This was not something that happened to me. I can look back and I can choose to be selfish with my per perception and go, no, this, this happened for me. Because what happens when an apple dies and it rots, the seeds come out. And those seeds from dad's life, dad's up in heaven now. He's 100% stoked with life. He's just having the best time in his life. And, and that, that makes me <laughs> absolutely thrilled. But those seeds that he's left have planted, achieved the impossible. His seeds are in the book. There's, you know, my, my very, very first thing, um, what's it called, that, that little thing, um, is, is to dad. It's, where is it? It's actually, I put it in the very end of the book. Yeah. And it's, it's my little thing to dad. And that's, I won't put it out there because you'll be reading that and this will be the most boring podcast, us just reading a book silently. <laughs> but but it, it's all because of dad's legacy that he left. And that wasn't in that moment he had cancer. No, his legacy was in the 60-something years he lived before that. When I was around, before I was around. And I think that's such a cool thing. That let's remember life is not about us and today and our moments. It's all just part of a journey. We're one piece of a massive puzzle called the world. And life in itself, all those little circumstances are one piece in our life. And those challenges and situations are all just one piece of the puzzle. And that puzzle, yes, that, that piece may be challenging. It may have sharp edges. It may not look like it fits in anywhere. As soon as it fits in, all those pieces start to make a picture that's called a life. And I think that is just amazing. And so I think if we can keep that perception and go, right, this is just all part of the journey that's getting me to where I want to go. It's, um, it changes everything. Absolutely, man. 110%. Uh, it's it's really interesting. I feel like you and I have very similar perspectives on life. And, you know, if you're listening right now, just think about it. Like we have millions and millions of followers. That ain't it. <laughs> right? It's like what you do with what right you now, It does not make you feel fulfilled. It's an yeah. amazing like, responsibility and honor, yeah. but it's not everything in life. Yeah. And, and I like before how you just said, it's like the each and every day thing you do. I believe that success is a habit. More of what you do is more of who you become. And that's really what we should focus on each and every day. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the vision process, having the vision. And I really believe that, you know, when I'm in prayer, when I'm spiritually connected, I believe that I'm getting, you know, the insights and, and, the, and feeling into like, okay, well, great. This is something that I'm connected to and this is what I'm here to do. And I think so many people do go into life blind. They don't have a vision. They don't have a spiritual connection. They're doing it for external things. And, and like you're really setting yourself up for unfulfillment when you do this. So I love that you covered all those really important things there. Now, we're about to wrap up the interview. And uh, could you break down uh, for us where we can find you online so we can read more of your content and consume more of, of your coaching and, and your courses or whatever else you got going on right now? Amazing. So the big mothership achieved the impossible is uh, just on Instagram, Achieve the Impossible. You can get the Achieve the Impossible book from achievetheimpossible.com. 
I'll do a global launch very, very shortly, which will be available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, Book Depository, all your regular places. But I wanted to make sure that that my followers, that my community got their hands on the limited edition signed copy first, because I think that was just such a, um, it's, it's a reflection of that community. And I wanted to be able to physically hold the book. I've held every single book. I've signed every single book personally and personalized it with their name and, and a message to them. Um, and I thought that was so important for this first book that I'd produced that it came from Australia. So shipping time's a bit uh, a little bit longer, the, the postage cost is a little bit more, but seeing the sacrifice that my amazing community is willing to take, these books are, are very, very close to gone. I had eight boxes. I'm less than one now, um, a couple of weeks in. So we're nearly out of those. Um, so AchieveTheImpossible.com is where you can get that limited edition signed copy if they're all sold out from there, which I'll announce on the website. Um, head over to Amazon or anywhere you get books. It's in iBooks uh, as well. And that format and then my personal account which is more of the behind the scenes of the books and a lot more of my raw vulnerable um yeah just a more and more raw and vulnerable version of of what i write on achieve the impossible is on my personal account which is peter j bone that's the behind the scenes of the book that's a little bit more of my life here in beautiful noosa in queensland australia um, and yeah, it's more of me just having a chit chat to the camera and it's a much more personal feel. So if you love the, uh, the writing on achieve the impossible and want to know a little bit more of the heart behind it, follow my personal account. And that's, um, that's where you can find me. Legendary. Thank you, man. Yeah. Everyone listening, make sure you check out Peter, connect with Peter and definitely get a copy of his book. Now, Peter, thanks a million for joining us, man. There was just so many value bombs there and so many perception uh, shifts as well. So I'm excited for people to really absorb this mm -hmm. and to apply this new way of thinking to their life to get even better results. So thank you, man. Very appreciative. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, dude. Uh, we always end the interview with this one last question. And the question is, if you were to deliver your last 30 second speech to the world, mm -hmm. what would that last 30 seconds sound like? Oh, it'd sound good. Listen to this. <clears throat> I believe each and every single one of us has a dream that God's planted inside that seems impossible. I think the only fulfillment and the only realization of that dream coming into reality is when we live up to our God-given gifts, talents, and abilities on a day-to-day -day standard where we pursue that which seems impossible. And our success is not determined on whether we achieve the impossible. Our success is determined by the person we become on the day-to-day -day journey of pursuing that impossible. That Dude. sounded so scripted, but I've never <laughs> said that before. <laughs> <laughs> got the bombs on it, man. Yeah. Thank you. I just read that. That was page 47 of the book. It was fun. <laughs> it was <laughs> a joke. <laughs> Yeah, amazing stuff, man. Thank you so much for sharing that and uh, sharing a piece of your heart there, dude. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing uh, this message with, with your followers. I appreciate it. And any time that, you know, someone allows someone else to share and, and give advice and perception shifts to their community that they've worked so hard to build and gather, I treat that as a huge uh, honor and I'm so respectful of that and so grateful. So thank you very much, Joel, and uh, all your audience. Thank you.